All right, everybody, welcome to episode 100 of the Ramon Foster Show. Episode 100, Moan, and DK's not here again. What the heck? Sure, this, this, <laughs> man, that's appropriate. That's how we started off, man. Like, I feel like I need the, what was it, Wilt Chamberlain? Or was it, was it Wilt Chamberlain with the 100? 100? We got to get, we gotta get you to sign, man. We had to get you to sign. Yeah. Oh. Man, yeah, Photoshop my uh, face on it. Or something like that. I'll yeah, Photoshop I gotta do your that. face, and that'll be the, that'll be the thumbnail or something, man. I'll, I'll yeah. make that the thumbnail. Uh, we hit a hundred, dog. That's crazy. A hundred, man. It's cra- and, and listen, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So we got to thank the, the listeners, the viewers on YouTube. I mean, look, all of the numbers are surpassing everything that, that you, DK, and I have thought from the beginning of this, yeah. man. Like it's it's just been. It's been amazing, and it's it's because of the you know everybody that listens and watches. It, it's awesome. So, Thank and it's cool to be a little sure. part of it, you know. Um, but Moan, <laughs> you know, it, to get to episode one hundred, Moan, you got to be a nice guy. Yeah. You know, you, you got you got to people yeah. got to love you, Moan. You know, and, and people do love you. <laughs> yeah, I I think you're a little better than tolerable. You know, I, I think you know I, I think the people in Tennessee maybe don't you know on the radio don't give you enough credit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're far uh, too kind. You know. But uh, but look, man, you know, we talked about Minka yesterday and you told me off, yeah. off air that, you know, he is one of the nice guys. He really is. And so yeah. uh, to see the nice guys get their shine, you know, how important are those guys to the to a team? Because, you know, like you need guys like you need those glue guys in a locker room how, how, for you in you the do. locker room. How important was it to have those guys? I, of course, Minka's definitely more than just a, a glue guy, you know, like, and, and I know what you meant by that too, but just, it'll be, I don't want anybody, he's not a glue guy, he's not a role player, he's not, but those guys, honestly, man, that you need in the locker room, like, and I'll be the first one to admit, your team, almost any team, I'm sure you're high school, you brought you brought them up yesterday, West Mifflin, I'm mm-hmm. sure there are some knuckleheads that you honestly, <laughs> you appreciate that side too, uh-huh. you, you uh-huh. know? And we're in the thick of offseason right now, too, where a bunch of the headlines will always come up. There'll be a DUI here. There'll be a dispute here. A guy will be fighting here. A guy get arrested here. But you never really hear about the good guys. And what's the old cliche? Good guys finish last. You know, you hear that. When when Minka signed his deal, man, I, I, I saw a lot of praise come out from, from his peers, from people in the mm-hmm. media. And just to speak about him, like he plays menacing. And you can do both. You know, he, he plays a style of football that's very hard. And you can still be a nice guy while doing that. Like, there's a switch that you can click on. But just some of Minka's story, man. We we did our Friday uh, fellowship also um, at the Silas facility every weekend, every week, man. And we have uh, Chapel also. Kent Chevalier, man, shout out to him for just leading more mm. guys the way that he does. And Minka's always there. Minka's kind of quiet and kind of got warmed up to it. And you hear learn a little bit about Minka's story and his journey, why yeah. his faith is the way he is, why he is the way he is. I bring up that that term salt of the earth, you know, that's Minka Mm -hmm. to where, if I'm not mistaken, it may have been Hurricane Irene that hit like the East Coast. And Minka's a Jersey kid, by the way, and went to Alabama and and how their house just pretty much got destroyed, pretty much lost everything. And just trying to navigate life as a young guy, leaving his family, going to Alabama, you know, and knowing that there was a bunch of carnage back home or truth be told, I don't want to tell his story for him, but they didn't have much. So to Mm. see him stay down very quiet play the game the right way and yeah he got some attitude yeah he's got a lot of bit uh, he's got a lot of that but it's good to me personally knowing him and seeing a air quotation marks good guy get his just due and and, and Mm. there's a lot more of them that just don't get credit but it's a superstar that you'll have come along like a guy like Mika. and i'll throw another safety in there troy troy (laughs) i was waiting for you to bring the name up man (laughs) And, and, you know, I I don't think you can understate those type of dudes that you want to see them get it. And there's so many of those guys that don't get the big payday. Like one of my best, I'm talking about best frigging teammates in this world, man. Just so like a nice guy. (laughs) And when I say Mm -hmm. his name, you're probably going to think of some moments on the field to where it's like, no, that guy was a prick. But Cody Wallace to this day, (laughs) man. He we caught he was so nice of a guy off the field. Coach Tomlin gave him the nickname the neighbor. You know, <laughs> where you going out of town and hey, uh Cody, yeah. you mind watching my house, man? I'm gonna leave the door unlocked. And Cody's the type to just sit outside your house, wait till you come back and be like, everything's fine, Ramon. You can go in. Like that's Cody Wallace, but he never got the big payday. He started yeah. and played well. But if you saw him on the football field, 
He was a menace. Yeah. He was the last shot guy. He was knocking people over the pile. I think he pinched somebody one time. But it's good to kind of see on this it, Friday of 100 episodes. So good guys get it, you know. Moan, it, it's it's wild to me when to see that switch with guys. You know, like oh, I, I, I've seen it with player. You know, we we had a kid uh, in at Steel Valley. His name was Todd Hill. He's playing uh, middle linebacker at Duquesne University now. Yeah. And on the dude, he was a baby face off the field. He was the nicest kid, like quiet, reserved. But Mo, yeah. I, I watched him break a team by himself. Like he, wow. he literally, he, he played fullback for us too. And yeah. by the fourth quarter, we, the, I think we were playing Avonworth, their middle linebacker in the fourth quarter hit the ground instead of tackling him. That's how wow. bad he broke this team. And so, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, like to see guys like Troy and Minka and Cody Wallace, and even, I mean, I think even you getting to know you off the field, like I, I would <laughs> never expect you to be the menace and the you know the the guy that you are, oh. Mar- Marquise Pouncey is another one who's just yeah like I, I like my Marquise was my dad's favorite player because of how yeah. nasty he would be and how much he would like chase after guys literally chase after yeah. guys mm-hmm. if they did something to one of his teammates. Uh, what is yeah. it with that switch? Because like at the NFL level, I'm, you have to have it. I mean, yeah. How do you like? I guess is it just something you're born with? Did you learn how to do that? Like what what is that switch? It's a little bit of both. You're you're kind of. It's in you, but people got to actually let you know it's okay for it to come out. I always say if I could go back to high school, I'd have been way worse. I'd have, I'd have, you know, hit guys hard. I'd have did all of those things. Even in college, I'd have just, I'd have turned, I'd have flipped that switch of nastiness just a little bit more because I was allowed to it because I wasn't going to get fined for it, you know, but it it is (laughs) the idea that you can be both things and it's okay whenever you cross those white lines to just be a menace, to be a prick, to be a bleep hole. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And yeah. As far as that switch go, and I, I commend guys that's able to do it and they go home and they got daughters and they melt. Marquise, mention his daughter's name. This dude is just going to yeah. spend hours talking about him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's awesome. And man. Yeah. It, it's just one of those situations to where when you understand a lot, I hear people say understanding the assignment. My assignment is to make you tap out. And Minka's kind of embodied that. Cody Wallace has kind of embodied that. You got to kind of learn it a little bit. And some of it might just be, I like this violent stuff. You know, (laughs) it's it's not. I I don't want to make it seem like it's in everybody because it's not. I've seen dudes that look like Tarzan and play like Jane because Mm. it just, that switch ain't there for them. And they'll be serviceable. They'll be good enough, but to just be highlighted in meetings is like, man, will you look at this play? Or you get that fine because that edge and and, and performance and pride and, and just doing your job is always on when you step across that line. So it's a little bit being in you. And it's also a fine line of learning how far you can go and not carry it with. That's one thing I always try to embrace. Like when I leave this field, that guy it. stays, you mm. know, I'm a different person. Yeah. I kind of got to let people know sometimes because I like to laugh and have a good time. But I'm like, I do that because I know my other side. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't you don't want prick Ramon because that <laughs> dude just ain't nice. And I'll admit that, like, when if you cross that line with me, there is really no coming back. I'm sorry to yeah. say. So I laugh and have a good time because I learned that that player, that person on the field is, is Needs to stay I there. I like getting paid. For, yeah, that's yeah. just the guy. Okay? Right. But Minka, man, again, he's a nice guy that got it. Yeah, and it, and it's it's great when guys like that get it because it's easy to root for them. It's it just, is. It's just easy. It, it's easy to, to, to see him, see him succeed and go, man, I'm excited for him. I'm happy for him. Yeah. You know, as a, as yeah. a fan, it, it's easy when you get guys like that. Moan, we got to take a break. When we come back, uh, with it being the 100th episode, I want to hear about your favorite moments of this show. I've got two in particular, and they both were kind of recent, but I want to hear your favorite, your favorites too. So stick around when we come back. We'll uh, we'll kind of do a flyover of the uh, Ramon Show's greatest moments. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It is episode 100, and in one, looking back fashion, I want Ramon to tell us a couple of his favorite. Give me like two or three of your favorite moments of this of this show, Moan. Like doing this for so long with DK, and then a couple episodes with me. What what's your favorite? What's your favorite moments? 
man, by the way, I just got to hold up the hundred just real quick. You know, there just it is. Hey, and you know what? That, that's, that's, that's the, that is it right there. That's the thumbnail. That's, that's yeah. the show right there, man. <laughs> um, but, but what I, I'll say this is it's a few, it's been so many moments though. I, um, I think initially DK asked me like, Ramon, we should, we should do this. Like, because I was, I ain't gonna say I was reluctant, but I was just like, man, I got this, I got that, and, you know, mm-hmm. and we finally talked about it and I understood why, like, I always tell people, I, I really didn't know my impact on the Steelers. I really didn't know, like, that, you know, I, people actually like me. So for me to actually do it and see the response from it, I legitimately am appreciative of every comment, every view, every conversation I could have with somebody about the show. That's one of my most memorable moments because it make this worth it. It make this to where the family aspect of what Stiller Nation is, the fan aspect of what Stiller Nation is to me, floors me. So those moments, whether daily or I'll sit back and have a conversation with somebody, even here in Tennessee, in Hendersonville, I saw mm. one of the comments that said, I want to see Ramon talk more about Hendersonville, Tennessee, because I'm from Pittsburgh <laughs> and I live here also. You know, so it's that. That's follow. cool. I've met That's people cool, man. Who are still a fans here? Frostbite. I brought him up. He listened to my show here in Nashville and also tunes into the podcast. Like that. Hey, he gave me a follow too, man. Shout out Frostbite. See, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that and, and mm-hmm. just every person I've met that's tuned in or either just a fan of me, you, DK, and the show, the Steelers, like I've been very appreciative. Another quick one would be Kev. That one was yeah. awesome too. Just having to sit down and honestly kind of have him unlock a little bit kind of disclose mm-hmm. some stuff on and off tape too that we couldn't talk yeah, about and just yeah, having him yeah. I don't want to say he was vulnerable but to have him in a position of damn Kev is really just talking and he was open I don't know if anybody's gotten that Kev so that was a proud yeah. moment and having teammates and former teammates kind of acknowledge like Mo you're doing good because that's the one thing that I was reluctant about doing this was I didn't want to be the guy that's selling out like and yeah. th- I had a sense. couple things. I don't want to. I don't want my name talked bad about in the locker room when I left. Like I wanted to leave an impact as I retired. I was like, man, hey, I will tell like Chooks or any Pouncing, don't let them talk bad about. It. I was like, man, nobody got nothing bad to say about you. And that's what I wanted my career to be. And then when I got mm. on the media side, because t- players they're reluctant to do this type of thing. I was just like, I don't want to seem like a sellout in doing this. I don't want to seem like I was disclosing just everything. And I, of course there's a fine line of what we say and how we say it and how we kind of box it in with, with our moments yep. on this show with giving insight. And I didn't want to be hey, Mo, you shouldn't have said that. There was this one particular article that came out that was very mis, is, it misrepresented. I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, the it was, fact they that they did that a terrible job re- with it. it. That was what I, but it was clickbait also. So yeah, uh, it was, but there was those moments. Uh, so it was, it mm. was that teammates, Kev, and just the appreciation of the want for this show too is my moments, man. Yeah, for me, the two that, that stick out obviously is the Kev uh, the the Kev interview. I I wouldn't even yeah. call it an interview because it was a discussion. You guys were just were, yeah. were just chopping it up as as friends. Um, to see him in that light, to you know, to get to hear him off air and and just kind of BS with him, and to see that he actually is you know that friendly and that approachable of a guy. Yeah. On, you know, on, on when he's when he's in front of cameras and when he's in the media and when he's, you know, in the public eye and behind closed doors too. Yeah. Uh, him and I were talking about golf, you know, like I never met the guy before. We're we're sitting there talking about golfing and he's telling me about golfing at, at an outing and everything. So that was cool. The second one for me, Moan, and and this was just this week was the the egg story. The the James Harrison egg. Story. <laughs> Listen, you what what they what everyone doesn't see is I was right behind DK while you were telling that story <laughs> and I was trying so hard to not make noise it, that I, dude, I had tears in my eyes I was crying so hard <laughs> listening to that story dude that that is one of the funniest things that I've heard in a very long time and that was I think that was one of the better moments of the, on this show for sure for sure That's that awesome. was something I man. actually thought people knew that man and uh I saw oh, a comment dude. too Mika signed this deal it was uh I guess Mika gets real eggs now <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> we always get real legs in Pittsburgh. Right. So, right. That's not the uh, one. No, that's 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 not us, man. But it's it's been so many moments. Like again, our relationship, Eddie, that we've we've kind of formed over this time. Yeah. Uh bourbon and cigars, bourbon and stogies. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. just discussing that type of stuff. And I love to know what other people's moments are. Of course, it can kind of blend in, but yeah, uh, you know what? For this episode in the in the comments for this episode, drop drop your favorite Ramon show moment. 
since this is episode 100, drop them in the in the comments. Let us know what your favorite uh, favorite episodes yeah. were, your favorite moments of the episodes. I, I'd love to hear that too, and I'm sure DK would. So um, I, would I think too, that's a great man. way to and, end this um, one, man. Or, or what you expect moving oh, yeah. forward. I will say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the uh, one thing we've talked about leading up to it is we'll probably try to branch off and do a, a life mm. pod, maybe with a, a guest of mine or cool. something yeah. like that. We're trying to extend that. And then the other side of it is the, the Friday episodes during the mm. season. As yeah. far as what we Gonna, see, our scout breakdown of them uh, and the reactions too, man. Um, this fall... If we're at 100 now, this should be very exciting moving forward, especially during yeah. the season. New quarterback, OL defense, uh, Coach T without Ben. Um, just <laughs> all of those things, man. This is going to be um, – we're just getting started. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, we're going to take one more break. When we come back, it's the Hamon segment. Hey, welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It's time for the Hey Moan segment, at which point I intervene to ask, Hey Moan, hello from your old friend, the fifth wheel. Look who decided to show <laughs> our guy. Look at you, you know, man. The people have to understand. And by the people, I mean the mass citizenry, the volume yeah. of yeah. humans who tune into this show have to understand that not all schedules perfectly align at all no. times and that no. we have other lives outside the ramon foster show you know and again we got to put this up yeah one yeah. Con- hundred on this beautiful friday dk you know what congrats seriously moan this is this is really yeah. really cool you know yeah. when Thank we started you. this it was like you know, it's like, let's see how it goes. Remember, that's how we were. No pressure. We kept saying that to each other. No pressure, no pressure. No pressure. And no here pressure. we are now with with literally, you know, we're, we're getting 10,000 plus, uh, whether yeah. it's, you know, on, on all the various different platforms that we're on and everything. It's just amazing, yeah. you know. Uh, I'm appreciative. We, I, I would say Eddie and I spoke about that. I'm, I'm over appreciative of of the response, the consistency of it, and just the growth too, man. It uh, we can't overstate that. I don't. I don't think even a little bit. Tell a friend to tell a friend to also tell that friend with kids to also do it. Listen, <laughs> uh, no foolishness, no fluff. Just us having a good time in here, DK. That's all it is. And today's hey moan segment does come from. From Heather, and she says, Hey, Moan, love the show. What's worse, the hot summer days of training camp in Latrobe or a late December slash early January cold, snowy game in Pittsburgh? Ooh, okay, because it's, it's about to be summer training camp, too. Uh, let's say this. It looks cold out there. The snow might be an issue before a guy who's an offensive lineman. I love it, okay? Because the playing field levels up. Most of the time, D linemen are faster than the offensive line, okay? We work going backwards. Oh, okay. That they didn't make sense for a second. You're, that's right. They're the ones on the sled. They're on they they're riding slow the skis. Down. Yes, yeah. indeed. So the cold never bothered me. And also, just a little tidbit. We got heaters on the sidelines, so when it's cold to you in the stands, we're actually very, we're kind of warm out there. Other than what's exposed. There's giant white benches. Yeah, there's giant white benches. If anybody ever seen them from behind, they're like really long. They look like church pews, really long. Yes, they do. They look like church pews. But Mm -hmm. underneath that white fiberglass is a heater that's blowing hot air underneath our feet, which I'll say this. If those heaters ever go out, and they have gone out in New England, um, then that's the worst part. I'm just calling it how it is. Cleveland and, oh. and New England. The heaters will oh always my. go out in those places. Only on the visiting bench. right. Only on the visiting benches. Um, so we've ever been in those type of situations. When your feet get cold, your hands get cold, that is the worst. So that is bad. But those hot summer days of Latrobe, two hours and 55-minute practices, day in and day out, there's nothing worse than that. And right now, I think almost every city in America is going through a heat wave right now. So, hey, I retired at the right time. Good luck to those guys that got to go outside and train every day. <laughs> but I couldn't stand it. You, I'm talking about the bruises that you get, number one. But then you go out there the next day, you're hot and the sun is hitting that forearm bruise. And then it get hits again by a guy by the name of Cam Hayward. And I'm just like, mm. God, can we please end this? And I'd almost say this, DK. You let me know if I'm wrong. 
I felt like when we did camp in Latrobe, and when we finally broke, I felt like as soon as we went to the south side, the weather just got a whole lot better. It's I don't so know funny how what it is. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in, 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 in fairness, when you're in that open campus at St. Vincent College, anybody who hasn't been there, it's it's basically just this giant bowl that surrounds yeah. Chuck Knoll Field and the other fields there at St. Vincent. And it's uh, it, it you you got nowhere to hide. I mean, there's a couple of trees in the one end zone. <laughs> you know? But those are usually taken. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's different. I will say this though, Heather. I, I, I got to throw this in. When you talk about cold and snowy game in Pittsburgh, you're talking about Jerome Bettis versus Brian Urlacher, yeah. and you're talking yeah. about one of the best memories uh, in that stadium's history. Jerome mm-hmm. clocking Urlacher on his way into the end zone with the snow globe effect coming down. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and the Pittsburgh fans going nuts through the snow. Nuts. That's quintessential Pittsburgh football right there. If I can be honest, that's probably, other than opening day at Heinz Field, that's probably the best environment to watch those games in Pittsburgh. It's, it's give me late November, give me December, January football. Oh, yeah, that haze and that gray sky. Oh, my. Especially when you're playing like Miami or someone, you know what I mean? Or you know there's there's nothing they can do. They're, they're coming out and they're like, what the? You know? <laughs> Give me a Cali team, man. Give me a Cali team or a dome team. Yeah, we found a way to fix this real quick. Heather, we appreciate the question. We Again, we appreciate everyone for listening to all uh, and, and watching all 100 of our episodes. And here's to the next 100, Moan. A hundred percent. I kind of teased him and told him, look, we got a lot more coming in the fall. There's talks of a side pod that can come. The breakdowns on Fridays and the reaction on game. They just a little teaser, just a little teaser about what's planning. So tell a friend to tell a friend.